Hello, this is this is love with Pastor Sisto Zavala from the Worship Center out in Weezer, Idaho. It's good to to see you again, and I'm glad that you're able to tune in another week and hear the gospel message of God's absolute truth and His love and His mercy and His grace. And um, I know last week I said that I was going to continue a message on righteousness, and I am going to get to that, but. I, by the prompting of God, I just felt led to speak a little bit about something else. And the message I'm going to talk about today has to do with revival. You've seen me in uh, some of the past messages talk about it, but there's some important things that I want to show you regarding a move of God or the move of God that God's going to bring. So uh, if I'm going to title this message, I would title it, Shepherding Revival. Now, the messages that I bring are to everybody, but I guess somebody could consider this more of a pastoral message, more of a leadership message, more of the authority that's inside of a church or inside of a move of God that's working throughout a city or the nation. But we, as believers, at any point, in your walk with God, this can definitely benefit you in walking and understanding how to shepherd a revival so we can get behind that, um, the leadership that we that is over us at our local churches to be able to lift them up and walk this revival out how God would have us to. So go ahead and go with me to the book of Acts and we'll go ahead and start there. The book of Acts in chapter 17, verse 6. It says, But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Now that's exciting. That's a great verse to read. We're excited about that. When you hear about some of the stories in the book of Acts and some of the awesome things that have happened, some of us say, well, we're we're experiencing that in our city. Well, praise the Lord. And some of them say, well, I want that happening in my city. Nicole and I, uh, my wife and I, Nicole, we went to Seattle this past week. We went to Seattle. We went and visited um, some family members, but we also went for a conference for our division, for our denomination, regarding some of the kingdom principles that God has. And we got to speak to a lot of people concerning God and and a move of God. And what I gathered from meeting with people was this, this one thing, is that there's a lot of people who are sensing and who want a move of God. Who doesn't want a move of God? I, I've, I told you before in uh, one of the episodes of why Nicole and I are here. And the reason is, is because God's getting ready to move. I showed you some prophetic scriptures regarding that. Because He's getting ready to bring a great move of God like we have never seen before. Now that gets us excited. That gets us wanting more of God. Some of us, that gets us into fear. But I'll talk about that a little bit more. But that's good and that's great. But there's also a part of shepherding that. And let me use this as an example. So God gives us finances to to manage. I mean, a lot of part of our life is finances. Um, We spend a lot of our time at work trying to get finances. So... We, we have those finances, but if we don't know how to steward or shepherd our finances, it can lead us to debt. Some of us, it'll lead us to prosperity if we do know how to shepherd it. And how, if we know how to use the principles that God has in His Word to work for us. And that's what I want to look at today regarding shepherding revival. Now... Once again, in the scripture I just read, it said that people, that Paul literally turned a town around. 
And could you imagine the town of Boise or the town of Weezer, which I believe it's going to happen, the Northwest, the United States, being turned upside down in a good way that, that it glorifies God. We've had different seasons of major revivals. It seems like every at the 1700s at the beginning, great awakenings. 1800s, great awakenings. Almost every century, there's been a great awakening or a great move of God. And so I want to prepare you for that. I mean, I'm glad that you're excited about it. But I also want to teach you to not fear it and to shepherd it. So, pastors, if you've uh, seen different moves of God and some of it brought some fear in, I hope to settle those fears today. Elders, I want to talk to you also because sometimes we just look at the pastor, but there's things that we can do to help shepherd this move of God that God is getting ready to bring. He's, he's going to turn the towns upside down, and we want to be ready for that. Amen? So using that scripture there, it says, These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. And they were actually in fear because they had heard of the things that God had done through Paul. They had heard of this new Christian movement that was happening. It happened to Joshua also. When Joshua was bringing people into the promised land, that he had given the that he had been given the job to do it. People would say, I think, um, I think when he went to Jericho, I think her name was Rahab. She said, "I heard of the great things that God has done through the Israelites," and that's the same thing that happened here. They had heard of the great things that God was doing through Paul, and they said. These men who have turned the world upside down have come here too. And they said, we don't want that. And they were in fear of what God was going to do. So regarding shepherding, I think the num one thing, I have about six points that we're going to look at. If I don't complete them in this show, I'm going to complete them in the next. First thing we want to do, listen, God's going to do things we've never seen. God's going to do things that, that are absolutely miraculous. So I say to you this first thing, this isn't my first point though, is do not, he told Joshua many times, do not fear, do not fear, do not be, do not fear, be courageous, meditate on the word that will bring you success. So I, I say to you, brothers and sisters, pastors, elders, councils, that do not fear what God is going to do. Because the awesomeness of God, we, we fear it. When we see God moving miraculously, we fear what God is doing. And I want to let you know that these things are of God. It's not going to happen the same way that we've seen things happen. We've seen different revivals. Um, where th certain things took place, which were of God, but whenever you get a power movement of God, which is what's coming, there's a lot of flesh going on. But we can't discount what God is doing there because we see a lot of flesh. We need to understand what is God so that we can operate with Him. Listen, when they went, to surround the city of Jericho with the worship team, that scared a lot of people. Listen, I wouldn't have wanted to have been the one to go around there. I would have preferred myself for him to use the army to go ahead than the worship team. I've been on the worship team. I wouldn't have wanted to be first. I would have wanted the pastor to go first, the council members, the young men, the, the, the people who could fight to go first. But... He used the praise and worship team. And Joshua was sensitive to God. And he was able to do what God wanted them to do. Which was take the promised land for God. So my first point is this. Follow the life of the Holy Spirit. And do not respond in fear. 
follow what God is doing. In these times and seasons of revival, we need to pray and seek and have the relationship that we have with God as tight as we can. That involves humbling yourself. Please get out of pride. Understand that we are vessels of God to do God's work. It isn't about Pastor Sisto's church, the worship center. It's, it's more than that. It's more than just my church. It's more than just what we see. God is moving in different places, even though it doesn't, we're not the center of the world. We need to make it about Jesus in his world. So, in, so that involves staying in close relationship with the Holy Spirit. We need to let him guide us and we need to let him prompt us on what he wants. Some of those things are going to be huge. We're not, we're not even going to be able to grasp it. Some of those things are going to be small, but God is still touching people. And that's what I want to show you. So let's go to Acts 8. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. I'm sorry. Yeah, let's go to Acts chapter 8. That's fine. Acts chapter 8. Verses 4 and 8. Therefore those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. So Philip wasn't one of the twelve apostles. You've got to understand that. There's some doctrine saying that the power of God stopped with the apostles. But I can show you that that's not correct. It says, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. He wasn't an apostle. And the multitude with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip. They listened to what Philip had said, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. So the miracles weren't just done by the apostles. It actually says in the word of God that Stephen walked amongst miracles and signs and wonders, the Bible says that those who believe the word of God and follow him, that these signs will follow him also. So it wasn't just the apostles. The power of God has always been. And it says, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did, which confirmed his word, for unclean spirits, they were crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed. Some people say, well, I have a teenager, and I do also, and sometimes she comes out with a loud voice. That isn't demon possession, brothers and sisters. It's, it's just teenage years, and I'm learning that. It says, and many who were power, paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. So this is what's going on. Philip, he is an imminent apostle. He's just being led by the Lord. God is moving on him to do this, to do that, sending him here. And this is what he does. He goes to this city, does, preaches a word, does signs and wonders, and people are hearing him. And they're coming to Jesus. And they're having revival. I mean, that's awesome. Multitudes came and heard him. And they're having revival and, and many things are happening and things are flowing quickly. And, and, and Philip is in the midst of that. He's the one who started it in that city. So now let's go to verse 26 of that same chapter. Chapter 8, verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, Arise and go towards the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, this is a desert. Now, I want you to know something about me, about Pastor Sisto here. I speak very loudly. That's just me. I'm very intense. But God is not a God of condemnation. And if that comes out of me, please don't take it that way because I don't. I just speak loudly and I'm very excited. And being led by the Holy Spirit, the reason I'm saying that is because I don't want people to be condemned. That isn't what I'm doing. It's always to build up and to exhort and to help. God didn't call me to, to beat people up with a stick. So 
What, this is what Philip does. He's in, he's in the midst of this great revival in this city. Multiple, multitudes of people are there. And then the Lord speaks to him and says, go, go over here. He doesn't know why. God didn't tell him why. He just said, arise and go towards the south along the road down from Jerusalem to Gaza. That is your next step. That is your next assignment. And what Philip does is he goes there. But me and you would say, well, what about the revival that's going on in that city? There's awesome things going on there. People are getting healed. People are getting saved. We need to build a church. We need to do this. We need to set councils. We need to get elders. We need to... Amen? And this is what the Holy Spirit, the Lord, tells Philip. Go to this road out between Jerusalem and Gaza and go wait there. See, Philip was sensitive to the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit, or in another word, he was sensitive to the anointing. And it was operating in him. God spoke to him, and he went. See, he didn't fear that angel that spoke to him. He knew it was God. And he, instead of being in the midst of that revival, that's what we all want to do. Amen. We want to be in the midst of the move of God. But we need to understand whatever revival, whatever move of God is happening, that we need to be led by the Holy Spirit and His promptings because God needs people in these days that are going to move on a whim and listen to what He has to say. So that we can move with the Holy Spirit. A lot of times what I see happen during revivals, brothers and sisters, a lot of times what I see happening is that God's moving a certain way and we don't want Him to change that. Because we like familiarity, right? And we don't want Him to change that. So the Holy Spirit's moving and He keeps going. And we stay where we want to stay. And I'm not talking about your church. I'm just talking about wherever God has placed us at that time to do. And he has us there. And then he says, go over here. In the midst of revival, then he says, go to this little town or this road and wait there. If we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, as Philip was, we would go. But if we're not, if we want our will, then we'll stay. And the Holy Spirit will keep moving. And then years later, the revival is not moving anymore. Or the presence of God isn't as manifest. And we say, what happened? But if we make and dedicate ourselves to being sensitive to the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit or the anointing of God will continually flow with him and will continually listen to what he has to say. Now, that isn't the only reason why people have the, the revival has dwindled down. There's many reasons, but I'm showing you to keep you in that because I believe that this is the last one. Not that Jesus is coming tomorrow, not that Jesus is coming May 12th of the year 2017. He could, come, he could come and for his church in 30 years from now. But he desires to continually keep working until he comes. That's what I believe. So we want to be sensitive to that. A lot of preachers teach, sometimes a little bit incorrectly, that what's in the Word is what we've got to do. And that's true, but by the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. Let me show you another example of that. Go ahead and go to Acts chapter 16. Now we're going to look into Paul. This is a, the main guy, right? I mean, he, he wrote half of the New Testament. If we're going to listen to somebody, which we should listen to any part in the Word of God, I want you to take a look at this. Acts chapter 16, verse 6. Now when they had gone through Phryg Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit 
to preach the word in Asia. So the Holy Spirit actually forbid them to go to Asia. But we're supposed to go and preach the gospel to anywhere, throughout anywhere in the region, anywhere where God wants us to go, yes, by His leading and guiding. So He tells them, don't go to Asia, I forbid you to do it. Now, if we had a little bit of a prideful attitude, or the attitude I'm saying of, we just need to do what the Word says, and we do. We would not be open to that leading and prompting and we would have gone to Asia and done what we wanted instead of what God wanted. And in this revival that's coming, this move of God, listen, not even the revival, in our Christian lives, brothers and sisters, in our Christian lives we want to be led by God. And so we go and... We listen to him because he might not want us to go to a certain area. He might not want you to go to Asia. He might not want you to go, if you live in Boise, he might not want you to go to Mountain Home in this revival. And so we want to be sensitive to him. Remember, this is a Jesus show. And we want to make it the Jesus show. God's not going to lead you to places that's going to hurt you. He's going to lead you to places of peace. And he sees the bigger picture. So this is what happens. Brother Philip goes and he encounters an Ethiopian and gets him saved. He was a prominent Ethiopian. He wasn't a small time Ethiopian. Can I just show you in chapter 8 of of the book of Acts. Sorry, uh, chapter, yeah, chapter 8, verse, let's see, let's verse 28. It says, oh, verse 27. So, Acts 27 through 29. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge over all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship. But he was a eunuch of great authority, was returning and sitting in his chariot, and he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. See, he was prompted by the Holy Spirit. He was in tune with him, listening to him. Even though he was in the midst of great revival in the city of Samaria, God told him to go to a dirt road. I, I'm, I'm positive it was dirt because they didn't have concrete back then. And he says, go there and now go over, take this chariot. Philip didn't know who he was. Philip didn't know anything about the guy. He just, at that time, he was reading the scriptures. And Philip presents to him Jesus Christ. And now there's Christians in Ethiopia because Philip, went and listened to the prompting of God. And that's what we need to do in this revival that God is bringing, in this end time revival that God is doing. We want to be sensitive to the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. And so we need to press into God. We need to humble ourselves in spirit. And we need to sense God and know God and know His Word, because we're not going to feel Him all the time. And so, I said I had six points, but once again, I know that I'm getting out of time, but I'm not out of message. I'm going to continue this. But one thing I know that the Lord has laid on my heart to tell you is this. If you're an elder, or you're a council member, or even if you're, ju- you're of, of the body of Christ sitting and attending church, I want you to know this. That in this revival, you want to get behind the authority that God has put. Get behind your pastor. Lift them up in prayer. Lift up your elders, because this is what happens. The devil, he's going to try to attack the highest, the highest person, not the better person, the highest person on on the pole there regarding spiritual authority. So the pastor is the head 
even though Jesus is the head of the church, the pastor's there, and the devil's going to try to attack him. If he can't get to the pastor, he'll get to the elders. And, and if you're an elder in the church and you've been experiencing great warfare, I want you to know this is why. Because you are part of that spiritual authority. And if he can't get to the pastor, he'll get to the elders. And if he can't get to the elders, he goes to the body. He's constantly trying to attack. And the way that the Lord says to protect everybody in there is through prayer. Through prayer, pray for your pastor. Get behind him. Get behind your elders. And lift them up in prayer. And lift them up as God would lead and guide you to. Because we want them to hear from the Lord to lead us in this next move. Amen? So, I had six points, brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was up ringed un, under a pastor by the name of Pastor Ron Osborne, and he was he we, we say he was long winded. Well, I inherited that. So remember this: we need to be led by the Holy Spirit in these times of revival. If you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart, call us, and we will pray for you. If you want to support this ministry, call us and look at the end of the show. We will. We will gladly accept to continue this ministry. Thank you and God bless you. Lord, Father God, I just pray for each and every one within the, the reach of this message. That they receive it and that that word of God grow in their heart. Thank you, Lord, for the next move of God that you're bringing. And let us be prepared for it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pronounce blessing and prosperity to each one. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and have a great day. All I know is on the road where freedom rejoices as heaven flowing with the wind. Hello, this is Pastor Sisto from the Worship Center. Just wanted to take some time to tell you how much I appreciate you supporting this ministry. Um, the TV show, and wanted to take some time to give you my address. The address the is 2430 Upper Road, Weezer, Idaho. Our contact number is 208-549-2677. You can look us up at Facebook under Weezer Worship Center, and our YouTube channel is Weezer Worship Center also. Thank you. Have you left me no choices? I've never come